Okay, everybody, welcome back uh, to Little Pig Barbecue. Today I've got some St. Louis style ribs, but we're going to do these a little bit different than, than we normally would. Normally I would go for a sweet profile, uh, but today I think I'm going to try something that I, I haven't really done that often. I'm going to do some Texas style pork ribs. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I got to go to Texas for a work trip and got to try some barbecue down there, and I've never had anything like it. It's awesome. They don't have a lot of sweet profile, but they definitely bring it with uh, pepper, salt, uh, a little bit of spice. So it turned, it was really awesome. So I'm gonna try these on um, some pork ribs today. Now, one thing that I did notice when I was in Texas is you didn't see a whole lot of pork, a lot of beef ribs, a lot of brisket, um, a lot of turkey, which was uh, interesting to me. But today I've got some pork. I'm gonna do my take on some Texas style ribs. So what I did today is uh, well, first I've got these St. Louis ribs. They were already trimmed. All I did was uh, take the membrane off the back and you know clean up a few pieces here and there that needed it. But other than that, I didn't do anything to these. Um, so what I did for my rub is I've got plenty of rubs that I could have tried, but I made up my own Texas rub today, Texas style rub today, uh, mainly salt and pepper. That's the, the key from what I've read and what I've tasted while I was down there. Salt and pepper is the key to any good Texas rub. And I've got a few other secret things in there that, uh, that you know, they're, they're mine. So we're going to get this uh, seasoned up today, put it out on the Weber kettle. I uh, fired my deep ocean blue up today. I've got it going. We're going to do this at about 275, build a nice crusty bark, get them wrapped and tender, and they should turn out awesome. So. First thing I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of olive oil, about a tablespoon, and I'm just going to drizzle that over the top and kind of get that worked in. Uh, the oil is only, only there for the binder, for the rub, and that's it. Not going to give any flavor. Normally I use uh, mustard whenever I'm doing sweet rib like Memphis style or Kansas City style ribs. I use mustard or uh, sometimes I use oil, but not very often. So we're going to do the same thing to both sides, get this nice and rubbed in. So typically whenever I'm doing ribs, I, I like to put on a generous amount of rub, but since I have a rub that is mainly salt and pepper, I'm going to go kind of light on it. Uh, you're just going to see the pepper on the ribs and the salt is going to be pretty heavy, so that's why I'm going light. Uh, but it's gonna it's gonna kind of melt into the meat as it sweats and give a lot of good flavor. So let's get these flipped over. We're gonna do the back side first. It's shaping up really good. And again, I'm going really light. You just want to see the pepper. That's what's going to build the good bark. Oh, that looks perfect. Pepper is giving it a nice, nice texture to it. So get them flipped over. We're going to do the same thing to the front. And if you notice, I'm kind of shaking it every so often. It's uh, pretty full, and I don't want the salt and the pepper to separate. The salt is a little bit heavier than the pepper, so it's kind of going to the bottom of the container here. But that, that's it for these ribs. I mean, they're super simple, probably the most simple way you can cook ribs, in my opinion. But uh, what I had while I was in Texas, the flavor was outstanding. I mean, they were really good. Haven't had anything like it, so. Get the sides really good. Nice and padded in. And that's it. That's all I'm doing to these. So I'm going to let these hang out on the counter for 15 to 20 minutes. 
and I'm gonna go outside and check on the kettle again I'm using my my new Weber kettle that I got around Christmas time it's uh, the deep ocean blue kettle uh, master touch series so I've got it fired up with some lump charcoal in my Sloan here I'm gonna put a little bit of moisture in the uh, water pan and, and should keep these from drying out and build up a nice bark so stick around I'm gonna get out there throw these on here in a minute so uh, thanks for stopping by and subscribe to my channel if you like it. Appreciate it. So we're going to be using the Weber kettle today. Um, I'm using my blue, uh, deep ocean blue that I got around Christmas time. Used this thing several times. It's probably my favorite one that I have. I have several kettles. I just really like the blue. So we're going to get this thing going today and show you how easy it is to set up for some ribs. So I've got you notice I've already got a bit of uh, royal oak charcoal, lump charcoal, uh, and then I have a, a, a royal oak uh, charcoal starter. So pretty easy to do. I've got this filled up all the way level to the top. And what I'm going to do is light this and over time it's going to slowly burn. I'm going to fill this up with water when it gets good and hot. And you'll notice I also have uh, aluminum foil down here and that's strictly just to make uh, clean up a little easier and also on a kettle the airflow comes from the bottom so this is actually going to divert some of the airflow to go through the charcoal and out the, the exhaust so it's going to make it burn a little more efficient and we should get a little little longer life out of the charcoal that way so let's get this thing started up these things light up really easy no problem that's all you got to do let that burn for a little bit I'll put a couple pieces over now the charcoal on this side is actually left over from a previous cook so just kind of recycle it when I can and this should take about 15 to 20 minutes maybe uh, to get going so take a look at the kettle again you also notice I have a slow and sear in there but you don't have to use a slow and sear to do ribs you you could actually totally um, not even use a charcoal basket at all just bank your coals exactly like this maybe put a water pan in here if you want some moisture uh, but it's not necessary to have the slow and sear it just makes it a little more convenient so next time you see me I'm gonna have the ribs we're gonna get them put on so hang tight and enjoy the video okay we're out here at the kettle it's hanging out about 300 degrees right now on the on the lid thermometer but i know over here it's about 250 to 275 so I'll show you what we got with some of the smoke clear so i filled the water pan up with some warm water and i've got some post oak chunks that i'm using today uh, Texas is big on post oak, so I, I picked up a bag of that and we're going to try that out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get the ribs on. Just like that, I'm going to kind of scrunch them together a little bit so they cook nice and even. They look awesome. You can see where some of that salt has started to uh, dissolve and is kind of covering the meat really nice and the black pepper is going to give it an awesome texture. So we'll get this closed up and I'm going to check on these after about an hour. It's a little chilly out here today, about 35 or 40 degrees, so these might take a little bit longer uh, just because of the cool air. But uh, the, the exhaust and the intake, I've got them opened up about a quarter of the way and I may have to play with that some to get it adjusted where I want it. But again, I'm shooting for 275 on the meat side so um, should I'm expecting them to take about four to five hours probably closer to five I'm gonna get them wrapped up uh, after about two and a half three hours and, and get them good and tender so uh, stick around and let's see how these babies turn out all right it's been about an hour let's get in here and check these out temperature still holding really good got some nice smoke coming out of there that's what they look like so far. So the bark really hasn't set in any at all actually, but uh, we're gonna keep these moist. So what I've done is I've got a, 
little squirt bottle of two parts water, one part apple cider vinegar. And this is going to help with keeping them moist and also helping develop that bark. So we're going to get them sprayed real good there and get it closed back up. Check back in about another hour. All right, we're back again. It's been about another hour. Let's check them out now. Still looking good. Pepper's looking really nice. Give them another quick spritz real fast. That should be good. So, get it closed back up and check on them in another hour. All right, it's been about three hours. We're gonna get these wrapped up really good. Okay, so we got some good, good bark. Let's zoom in a little bit, check it out. Okay, that's what she's looking like so far. So we're gonna move it over to the uh, table and get it put in some butcher paper today. All right, so move them over here. They got good color. You can really, really see where the bark formed. Looks really nice. So I'm gonna get these wrapped up quick today. Now most of the time whenever I do ribs, I'm using uh, aluminum foil or maybe even other types of meat, I'll use a, an aluminum pan. But I'm using the butcher paper today mainly to help preserve the bark. So one good thing about the, the butcher paper is it's gonna allow the meat to breathe a little bit. It's not going to steam it as much, so still get really good and tender, but you're not going to lose that good bark that we worked really hard to form. So, we can get them back on here like that and move it back to the grill. Put it on here just like that. And I've got it meat side down. We're gonna let this go for probably around an hour and a half and pull it off and they should be good and tender. So we'll check back in a little bit. All right, folks, I got you back inside. Uh, we started to lose some daylight. So uh, I just pulled these and all I did to check for tenderness was take my temperature probe and uh, put it in between the bones. And if it goes in like butter, uh, pulls out with no resistance then these are done. I'm not really looking for a temperature on ribs But if I was if I was to look at the reading, it's probably around 205 to 210 That's probably what these were at so as you can see the bark is awesome really see the the black pepper specks uh, It's got a really good color from the smoke that post oak put a really nice color on these uh, the whole house smells like uh, ribs right now, so we're going to tear into these real fast. I'm going to flip them over just so I can see the bone. I'm going to just give me a cut right down the middle of the rack. And that sliced real easy and I think I'm going to I think I'm going to take the middle one out and try it. All right, flip them back over. Okay, you got, got a nice little smoke ring there. Good color on the bark. Let's see what they taste like. Mmm. These taste really good. And they're coming off the bone really nice. Man, these things, these couldn't have turned out any better than this. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting at a few of the places I went in Texas was the ribs weren't sauced. They served the, the sauce on the side. So any barbecue sauce, some good smoky barbecue sauce would go perfect with these. So I think that's how I'm going to have them. So let's get you up here. We'll recap on, on what we did. And I'm going to finish eating these. 
just to kind of recap on what we did, we uh, got a good good slab of St. Louis style ribs, took the membrane off the back, and just did the most basic barbecue rub you can do. Salt and pepper uh, with a few extra ingredients in there, but uh, to be honest, that rub, I taste the salt and pepper, but I don't taste the other stuff that I put in it, so I'm going to tweak it a little bit and kind of play around with it a little more. But uh, the bark is awesome on this. Turned out really good. Uh, couldn't be happier with that. Um, I don't think I would change anything about the, the way I cooked it. So we got it seasoned up with the rub, coated with some olive oil for a binder, got the rub applied, and then got the Weber kettle fired up with some lump charcoal. Uh, used the slow and sear, so I got the water in there, let it come up to temperature. Uh, the average temp throughout the day was about 275 to 300. It went a little over 300 a couple times, but I just adjusted the, the top damper down and it's, it stayed solid all day long. So uh, for the first hour to two hours, I spritzed it every hour with some uh, apple juice diluted with some water. Uh, that's, that's about it. I mean, once I got the color I wanted, I put them in a, in a nice uh, uh, butcher paper wrap and that, that kind of retained the moisture, but it didn't um, a lot of times when you use aluminum foil, they get mushy a little bit. Uh, so I used the butcher paper to preserve the bark because I didn't want to lose any of that. And uh, left them in there for about two hours after that. Total cook time was about five hours. Pulled them whenever they were done, brought them in the house, and let them rest for about 30 minutes. Uh, that's all you got to do. These are the, it's the simplest rib recipe you can do, but it turned out awesome. So uh, definitely different than your traditional barbecue flavors. Got a lot of paprikas and sugars and uh, garlic powder, onion powder, that kind of thing. This didn't have any of that. It's salt and pepper. So we got a little bit of kick from the pepper, but not too bad. Uh, but, but there again, you could adjust that if you wanted to. If you wanted to use a little less pepper, maybe throw in some other things in there. Maybe some um, a little onion and, and garlic. That would be really good. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's a wrap for this one. This turned out good. I would definitely do it again, and I would urge you to try it as well. So uh, go get you some ribs. Just because you're not in Texas doesn't mean you can't enjoy some great Texas barbecue at home. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Look me up on Instagram. I've got me uh, an Instagram page as well. Uh, so I appreciate you stopping by, and I hope to, hope to see some comments below. So thank you.